to rinse my burette. Remember, I rinse my pipette. I've likewise got to rinse my burette. Okay? And so I'm going to take and I'm going to pour a small amount of solution in there. You'll note here I've got the stop clock here with the thing turned sideways. That means it's closed. No solution can come through. And I'll just pour a little bit of solution in there. Okay? Just a little bit. You'll notice I got it filled about that much. Take it out of there. And roll it all over the walls again. Cover the walls with the hydrochloric acid solution. Pour it out of the top. And then take it open the stopcock and just let a little bit go through the bottom as well. Sometimes with the burette you'll get an airlock like this. Most of the time you can clear out that airlock by simply taking your rubber ball on top and giving the glass there. Let's see how free that. Okay. So if that happens to you, you can come ask me, but you don't need to because you can do that yourself. Okay? Now get your burette into the burette stand. It's just simply a matter of taking it in place there. Get it down low. Again, as I said, you can use your funnel if you wish to. If you use your funnel, you must pour solution through the cone of the funnel, through the neck of the funnel to make sure it's clean because you already use that funnel for your base solution. Okay? So I'm going to fill that burette to somewhere near the top. It's near the top. Okay, waste beaker here. I'm just going to pour a little bit of solution out of there. Let's make sure everything's working good. Looks like there's a little bit of static charge on that beaker because it's being attracted towards it. Okay, and now I'm ready to go with my first titration. Okay, now, next thing I need to do is get my sample. Okay, so I get my hydrochloric acid out of the way. Now I'm titrating sodium carbonate with hydrochloric acid. I made the sodium carbonate already. Like I said, there's bubbles on the walls there. That's because it's got dissolved carbon dioxide in it. Those bubbles will eventually all rise to the top. It'll go flat, just like pop. But um, what we need to do is we need to get some of this stuff um, into a pipette. Now, Here's our pipette. This one looks clean and dry, but we can never assume that it's clean. So we need to rinse it like before. And we can't pipette out of here. If we pipette out of here, this stuff is contaminated. So we need to have a small beaker to use. And unfortunately, I already used my small beaker, so I'm just going to rinse it out here and dry. So I'm going to pour a little bit of that solution into my small beaker. And that way, if I for some reason wreck it, I've still got most of the solution left unwrecked. I pipette out of here and I wreck it. If I contaminate it, I ruin the solution. I gotta start all over again. Okay? So that's clean and dry. So I'll take and I'll pour some of that solution in here. Again, about 40 milliliters. One to two centimeters. Give yourself enough room not to go flat. You're gonna need an Erlenmeyer flask. This Erlenmeyer flask can be wet or dry. It does not matter. Wet or dry. Okay. Now, just like rinsing the burette, that's the pipette. That's the order of the day. So again, bulb on really loosely, so loose it almost falls off. Bulb back on, squeeze the air out, suck in just a bit of solution, cover it up with your index finger roll it around the walls and again like I said this stuff is household stuff it's it's not going to hurt your hands or anything like that but you want to make sure that you're keeping its concentration the same okay let that out do that again a second time and then you for sure have good clean sodium carbonate in your titration Okay, there we go. 
So now we're ready to put 10 milliliters of that into our Erlenmeyer flask. Now this Erlenmeyer flask, it doesn't matter if it's wet because I'm going to put 10 mils of solution in. It doesn't matter if I change its concentration of it. So I'm just going to rinse it a little bit with water just to make sure it's good and clean. It looks spotless. It's been in a dishwasher. It should be spotless. But. So I've got that. Got a little bit of water in there. So I'm now going to put my 10 mils of sodium carbonate in. So I pull it up. Again, that's over like that. Turn it sideways so it goes a little bit faster. There's the line there. Go well past the line. Slip off the bulb. It was on so loose I didn't have to fight with it to get it off. Then just kind of lock your finger. the Erlenmeyer flask on the wall of the Erlenmeyer. Because this thing is marked TD to deliver off the wall. Because I ran it in the wall, along the wall, I'll squirt just a little bit of water down the wall there to get it all down there. Now I'm going to add my methyl orange indicator. orange indicator. I'm just going to put one drop in. Just enough to make it a nice light straw yellow color. Okay, and I'm going to need a piece of white paper to put underneath here. So I'm grab a piece of white paper. That way I can see the color change. Now the colors Ultimately, if I go too far, if I overshoot my endpoint, I will have, um, I'll, I'll, I'll make sure that I, I, it will go all the way to pink. If I get a good endpoint, it will be a light orange color, it'll be between yellow and pink. Now, one thing I'm not sure that I checked before, but it doesn't matter, because I can do it now, is I want to make sure before I take my initial burette read, that the tip of the burette is filled. And I can't recall whether I already checked that or not. Okay, so I'm just going to take this here and just run a little bit of that solution through the tip there. It looks filled, but I just want to make sure yeah, it is filled. Okay, so now I'm going to start titrating. Now before I start here, I'm going to take my initial burette reading. Now it's best if you have a dark surface to hold this against. Your hand works pretty good reason is because the lines are white. So right now it's reading 2.0 milliliters. Now here in trial one, under initial burette reading, I would write 2.0 milliliters. When I finish my titration, I'll write my answer in there. I'll subtract to get my volume of titrant. Okay, so I'll start titrating. Now these burettes are nice, they make a nice thin stream, but what you want to do is you want to swirl the whole time. So you're swirling and adding at the same time. And you'll, what you'll see is you'll see a pink dot where the two solutions make contact with each other, and that pink dot will get bigger and bigger and bigger the closer you are to your end point. I'm still quite small, I'm still a long ways away. Keep that solution squirting. When I get closer, then I'll start slowing down. I might even go drop by drop near the end. You know, my pink dot's now getting quite big. And I'm still not there yet. Just a drop or so away right now. So I'm going to add one drop here. Okay, now. 
what I want to do is this. Just so you have a comparison here, I'm just going to pour some sodium or some sodium carbonate into this other flask. And I'm going to have a little bit of indicator to it, one drop. Just so you can see the difference in color between these two. Now, are you able to move in with the camera and look at these from above? 